The world's first ever electric vehicle expo was held on Korea's southernmost island of Jeju from March 15th to the 21st. Economics correspondent Na Hyung Gyung was at the event and performed a unique stand up in one of the electric cars. The benefits of electric vehicles is that they are eco friendly and cost efficient. But the problem is that these vehicles are expensive and there are lack of places to charge the battery. While a lot of interest is being shown in electric vehicles, Hyungyung's report gave us insight into the various types of electric vehicles and showed us what's needed to commercialize them. The Seoul mayoral elections are known as the gem of local elections. The competition among the ruling Senate Party's main contenders has kicked into high gear ahead of the June 4th local elections. Seven-term lawmaker Chung Mong Jun has a lot of experience in the political arena. Former Prime Minister Kim Hwang Sik has 40 years of expertise in the administrative sector. And there is the Supreme Council member Yi Hae Hoon, who is well versed in economic matters. The three competitive candidates are vying to become the party's sole mayoral candidate. The Senuri party will decide on its candidate for the sole mayoral race on April 25th, and Myungil will keep us up to date with the results. This week, cultural correspondent Pak Chi Won introduced a very special story on the National Kugak Center's 2014 performance schedule. The first performance was the Chongmyo Chereya. It used to be performed in front of Chongmyo, an ancient shrine during royal ancestral rites in the Joseon dynasty. Chongmyo Chereya, which is a collection of instrumental music, song, and dance, is Korea's important intangible cultural property number one and was designated by UNESCO as a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity in 2001. This performance was all the more special as the audience could see the full-length performance. Chi Won's report was a piece that reignited our interest in Korea's beautiful cultural heritage. Growing up, I've always wanted to be that news lady, the one that delivers the news every night, um, which my dad and I used to watch. And I think that dream carried on till this day. Um, I think that it's the role of a reporter to feed the common people with uh, the current affairs, but not like a teacher, but more like a storyteller. And since I felt the urge of telling my story since I was a child, um, I believe being a news reporter is the perfect job for me. Um, in my case, I love meeting new people, being at different places. And I think the best part of being a reporter is that you get to do all this, and on top of that, you get to tell new stories to the people with my own words. It's still dark outside, but one person is moving quickly into a dessert cafe in Seoul. It's reporter Shin Se-min, who is a rookie reporter with just six months of experience in the field. This is the site of her coverage today. The delicious cakes and cookies are eye-catching. White Day 얘기를 하면서 이제 부밍이 일어나는 디저트 시장이다. 이제 테라스에서 그냥 간단하게 디저트랑 세팅을 해놓고 멘트를 끝내고 가게 안으로 들어가는 거예요. 그리고 패키지 하는 동안에. 바꾸나요? Semin is getting ready to connect live with Korea today. 심각하게 뭐 무빙을 하고 많이 하거나 그럴 필요도 없어요. 그냥 식스된 상태에서 저 멘트 그냥 할게요. 그러고 recently every time when I was visiting department stores I'd realized that there had been a lot of lines forming in front of dessert shops. So that triggered me to think um, why and what the dessert craze what people are so um, excited about to be in line for that. And then later on, I started reading articles about the dessert industry booming and what the industry is doing to supplement the demands for the growth in the market. And then there was a white day in Korea, March 14th, where men uh, give females little sweet treats. So then I decided to do a coverage on a booming industry in dessert for Korea today. 
Good morning, Jinju. I'm at a dessert cafe in Itaewon, Seoul. 여기서 멘트를 했다고 생각을 하고 이렇게 한번 걸어서 들어가 보실래요? 이렇게 Actually, today is Semin's first ever live connection. That is why she seems to grow more and more tense by the minute and goes over her script over and over again. Shops, one of the many shops that has been enjoying the. 서서 하고 멘트 끝나고 저희가 펜을 할 거예요. 가볼게요. 하나, 둘, 셋. Good morning, Chinju. I'm at a dessert cafe in Itaewon, Seoul, and also this isn't the only spot where booming in dessert markets is happening. 아니요. 들어가는 것까지. Ah, and these individual stores aren't the only one who's enjoying the sweet vibe. 얘기 다 하고요? 아니면 얘기 얘기하고 가죠. 네. Good morning, From the script to the way she looks at the camera, Semin has to pay close attention to a lot of details for the live connection. 다시 할게요. 죄송해요. 이거 다시 한 번만 보고. Not just the individual stores like this. 근데 이따가 그러면 안 돼. 네. 알죠? But it's just not the. But it's just not the individual stores. The show finally began. And good morning. Welcome to Korea Today on this Friday morning. I'm Oh Jung Joo alongside Kim Min Jung and Kim Young. Good morning, everyone. Which flower do you think represents the spring? Lady Tenika, get the mentam there. Stand by. Mic is just a quick. Stand by. 움직이면 안 돼요. TV 넘어가기 때문에. And we connect live to our reporter Shin Se Min for more on this trend. Se Min, where are you now? It is now Semin's turn. Yes, Chinju, I am at a I am at a dessert store in Itaewon, Seoul, where many of the shops just like this have been feeling the dessert craze in the market. And actually, we can tell from her voice that Semin is nervous. The only ones that have been feeling the dessert craze. Chocolate cones filled with choco balls, a pearly whipped cream cake with raspberry on top. Everything moves at a fast pace once again. It's because there's another live connect waiting for Semin. Semin is anxiously waiting while the VCR is playing. What's currently on the shelves? And as you would expect from a rapidly evolving market, the, sh uh, the turnover rate in department stores for dessert shops... Semin went through a tough time, but there's nothing quite like hardening your shell as a reporter. Today was such a day for Semin. Back to you, Jinju. It was my first live connection ever, and I was very nervous up until, I mean, even during my reporting hours. And looking back at my first live connection, I am not 100% confident. Um, I see my flaws and a little bit of strength in between. Uh, knowing that, I think it has been a great experience for me to uh, grow in the future for different and future live connections. Semin isn't the only one experiencing new things and learning from them the hard way. It's the same for reporter Kwon so -ah. During her on-the-job training period, Soa shadowed senior reporters and picked up tips on how to gather news materials. And today, she's assigned to write a package on an issue that's been developing over recent days. Basically, we write everything we get assigned. So it can be stories about e economical stories, political stories, everything. And I like that we get the chance to write a variety of stories. As for me, I have been writing a lot of stories about the medical strike here in Korea. It's very fun um, seeing how an issue develops and also I feel a big uh, responsibility since I should be the one who knows the most about that issue in the whole newsroom. These days, she doesn't write planned items. She is writing articles that are being aired under her name. 
Today's item for SOA are the negotiations between the government and the Korean Medical Association, as the two sides have been battling for some time over medical reforms. And um, here, I kind of want to mention that they are going to set up a kind of um, committee. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> work is work, and she has been a reporter for over six months now, but Sola still feels helpless when it comes to time management. She needs to get used to it to deliver accurate news quickly. This time, Soa goes in for the dubbing. A second doctor's strike following last week's one-day walkout may have been averted with a tentative agreement reached by the Korean Medical Association and the government. The KMA and the government will set up a committee to tackle health insurance reform. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. She doesn't forget to carefully check everything. Now, all she has to do is edit the video. She needs to speed it up a bit if she wants to make it on time for the news. Okay, thank you. She could take a breather now as the article has been handed in, but Soa heads straight to the studio control room. It is to monitor her article. And the government, Kwon Soa reports. A second doctor's strike following last week's one-day walkout may have been averted with a tentative agreement reached by the Korean Medical Association and the government. The association Becoming a reporter is a process, and dealing with the weight of responsibility is part of it. To make sure everything matched well together, I went down to um, watch my news in the control room. And since everyone is focused on what is aired um, at that moment, it's the best way to monitor yourself down there. And uh, one more thing, um, you can also see the reactions of the anchors through one of the 10 or 20 monitors in the control room. So while my package is uh, being aired, I kind of get indirect feedback by looking at their facial expressions, yes. <laughs> Another rookie reporter, Connie Kim, is doing an interview in the morning. Today's topic is about foreigners buying directly from Korean websites. 
and the interview continued. 네, 역지구 시장을 타겟하시는 이제 그런 고객층이라든지 이제 목표에 대해서 말씀 부탁드릴게요. 저희는 이제 국내에서 가지고 있는 유명 브랜드나 해외에서 진행하는 유럽 유명 브랜드를 가지고 있다는 것이 큰 장점이거든요. 그래서 그렇게 좀 저희가 브랜드사들의 해외 진출에 대한 어떤 교두보의 역할을 또 하고 있는 것이 저희의 목표 가지고 있습니다. 롯데몰닷컴만의 그런 홍보 마케팅 전략이라든지 그런 게 따로 있을까요? 이제 음. 앞으로 뭐 추진할 거라든지 아니면 네네네. 지금 현재 하고 계시는 거라든지 제가 이건 따로 질문에 안 드렸는데 갑자기 아, 네, 궁금해져서 저희가 어떤 마케팅 전략이라고 하면 좀더 보다 현지화된 전략을 많이 펼치라고 하고 있습니다. 저희가 주요 국가 위주로 파악해서 1차적으로 홍보 마케팅을 진행하려고 하고 있고요. Last year there was this boom where Korean customers would buy directly from foreign websites such as Amazon or eBay. But then I was looking into some details and I found out that now in Korea it's the other way around where foreign customers would buy directly from Korean online websites as well. So I wanted to visit these two companies to get some inside information about the market prospect and how, and how big the market is going to grow further in the future. Connie and her staff moved to a different location. <laughs> 지금 4시부터 이게 이 벨트가 돌아가는데 <웃음> 지금 좀 쉬, 지금 쉬는 시간이에요. 음. 아 그럼 이따가 이것도 돌아가는 거예요? 네. 네. She's at a warehouse where she can see firsthand how foreigners are buying directly from Korean websites. Just in case she misses the liveliness of the place, Connie hurries for a stand-up. Online orders from abroad are directly sent to this warehouse, and with most of the products stored here. Most of the, uh, <laughs> online orders from abroad are sent directly to this warehouse, and with most of the products already stored here, they can be shipped out to global customers in as little as three hours. Um, I think being at this spot, you get to see more information that you weren't able to get from online or through phone interviews. And for example, at the warehouse, as soon as I walked in, uh, it was totally different from my expectations because it was very big and I knew something very interesting was going on there. So I was able to um, soak up the whole atmosphere and I think that gave me a big picture of what I was going to tell to my audience and what kind of details I wanted to convey to the viewers. To become a perfect reporter, you need to learn to deal with the pressure. We can look forward to the three rookie reporters rising to the top in the future. Well, it can be connected with the situation in Northeast Asia. Yeah, can and, it? Uh, well, uh, though we live in the globalized world, well, the, also the nationalism expands its influence. Mm -hmm. the, ironically, the more the world becomes globalized, mm -hmm. the wider the nationalism expands its influence. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, the, the, yeah, that they can be, well, the identity becomes clear when we meet others. So, though we live in a globalized world, it means that we can frequently meet foreign or alien things. Mm. And it makes me think deeply about my own identity. Uh. And uh, well, maybe the differences between me and others became vivid. And this can be connected with the sense of nationalism. Would you say nationalism um, really hinders 
um, globalization or nationalism gets in the way of uh, national benefits? It should go all together. Well, yeah? yeah, we cannot separate it. Maybe you have many European friends when they ask where I'm from. Some answer, I'm European. And some answer, mm. I'm an Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I get that frequently. I'm uh -huh. European, yeah. Uh -huh. so, to so, me, it struck me as, as unusual or weird because uh -huh. I would never say I'm Asian, right? Yeah, I'm I, Asian. I'd say I'm yeah, Korean. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem of identity. Why there exist some Europeans, but at the same time, I'm an Italian, I'm a French, something like this. Yeah. And so these two different, how can I put it, uh, identity feelings coexist all together. What about in Korea? I mean, uh, would you say nationalism is quite strong amongst Koreans or? Old Peninsula has been divided by DMZ mm -hmm. and uh, you, my generation and your generation are living on a kind of island. When it comes to the cases of 19th Japan, it was not common for Japan to open their well, country to foreign invasions or foreign interruptions. Mm -hmm. So actually, we Koreans were more familiar with accepting others, accepting something alien. But we now live on an island like Japan, and this kind of, well, well expressing the sentiment of nationalism is quite frequently uh, observed in cases of islands. So we have to be aware of that. Uh, we should encourage our growing generations to be aware more about the foreign things. So basically, um, the ideal situation would be a, uh, a coexistence of nationalism and globalization. Yes. yes. And uh, I suppose um, an ideal mix of the two mm. will be the best scenario. However, of course, it's it's not the easiest thing no. to get to the point, right? No, yeah. yeah. I really do think this is a very interesting point. We will continue um, our discussion yes. down in the newsroom. Thank you. All right. Well, yeah. See you. Yeah. Normally, we would talk about uh, the questions that we'll be going over in the studio, but today, um, a lot of it was centered around my curiosity about this nationalism and the emergence of nationalism in Northeast Asia, and I think it really gave me um, uh, um, background information on the interview, and I think it will help, yeah. We saw it in the case of Crimea in its vote to break away from Ukraine and it plays a large role in Northeast Asia as well, its nationalism. The opening ceremony of Beijing Olympic Games can be taken as a good example of revealing the Chinese nationalism we meet together and talk about sincerely regarding how to solve the problem and to improve the cooperation. I'm the Chinese, so it is not available.